Infinite Powers, How Calculus Reveals the Secret of the Universe, book review and some interesting ideas I found in this book, some notes that I wrote down. I'll start with a quick review. I'll give this book three stars. I think it didn't do the best job accessing this book to the general public. It could definitely have a better job. There is some details, uh, some equations and details that are not fully easily or easily to grasp for the general public. I took some classes of calculus, I haven't finished the whole thing, and some of it was a little too much for me. But the other parts were pretty good, and it does a really good job of connecting all areas of calculus together. So it gives you like a grand view and everything, which was nice. But Besides that, I think it didn't do a really good job of accessing this, which is, this is what he's trying to do with this book, giving a general view on this, but all, not all parts were easily understood. In addition, there is a lot of history. So if you like history, that would be good. But for me, it was like a little too over details, details that are not matters for anything so details that you don't need to know a lot of back and forth between people some of the history is pretty cool some nice interesting uh, events that took place but other ones are not as interesting and i think there's like it's probably almost half of the book is about history so not the best in this front let's see the notes Round was the hardest shape to calculate, so they have a hard time calculating rounds because they had to really, they knew how to calculate straight lines, but not rounds. A raindrop will form a circle since it expands everywhere evenly. That's why there is like a circle, because it spreads everywhere at the same time evenly, and that creates a circle. Reduction to absurdity refers to keep dividing steps into half, so there is this paradox of how long it's going to take you to get to the wall if you keep going if you only can go half of the way that you off of the step you took before and that's called reduction to absurdity continuous line can be divided to infinite pieces if you want to calculate the line you can just chop it off to many small pieces and calculate gps work by three signal forming a triangle. This is how they know where you are. There is three signals. I think it's two or three GPS satellites. I forgot exactly, but they form a triangle and then they know exactly where you are by calculating the distances and things like that. Aguileo measured how fast gravity is by using a slope. Didn't have any other measurement tools the way he calculate Gravity was by using a slope that he built by, its, by himself. Dividing the areas to triangles is a good way to calculate it. That's the best thing to use it in animation many times, in other ways. The way to use or to calculate areas sometimes is very good if you divide it into triangles and then create uh, calculate the sum of it. Side notes, there is too much unnecessary history. That's what I said in the, in the, in the review part. Some, a lot, of, a lot of history, most of it is like not related, just random details that's not directly related and interesting. Again, for me, some people would might think it's interesting, but I didn't. The FBI converted fingerprint data to waves using calculus to save memory. So it was too big, hard to access those data, that data. And what they did, they converted fingerprint data to waves and that why, and that's how they were able to shrink the data. I think about 20 times smaller than it was before. Exponents is for exponential growth. That's how we calculate exponential growth. And then we have logs algorithms to undo the exponents, basically. Derivatives, 
is a tool to calculate the rate of change when the rate is changing too. So it's not the same rate constant. It's not the constant rate. The rate of change change. Calculus is all about breaking curves into infinitely small pieces and then calculate them. That's what calculus is. We have curves and you chop it off, calculate and put it back together. Newton didn't discover gravity as many people knew it before him. He was not the first one to figure it out, which he didn't know, but he discovered how far gravity works, how far gravity still works. And you figure out that it's actually pretty far. Calculus is essentially breaking things into smaller pieces, calculating them and putting them back together. I wrote that probably a second, if not the third time. That's basically the thing, the thing I got most out of this book is what calculus is. It's just thing, take, uh, breaking things into smaller pieces until you can calculate it and then you put it back together. Nonlinear reactions are all around us. Peanut butter and jelly synchronize together to form a better thing. So this is just one example of a nonlinear relationship. It's not one and another one create two. Because peanut butter and jelly creates a better thing. It's a better, it becomes a better and that's not a nonlinear relationship. That's a really good analogy or a metaphor for a nonlinear relationship, but it's all around us and it's really hard to calculate nonlinear relationships. Calculating neurons could create hundreds of dimensions. In this way, dimensions is not when we think about the fourth and the fifth dimensions in X, Y, and Z. Uh, dimensions means just variables. It's a lot of variables, but it creates hundreds or millions of different variables which obviously complicates things farther. And that's it for the notes. And again, this book is about three stars. Unless you really like math, maybe you like this a little more. If you don't like math, I would not recommend that book. And, but it's, it, again, like I said, it's, it's a good overview of calculus. And even if you hate math, it's a little better than most textbooks and most how Acad Academy teaches calculus. So that is it. Thank you.